think if Serena Williams was watching, if LeBron James was watching, if Tom Brady was watching, I believe that they would look at Volkanovski and say, my goodness, this is the most fit endurance athlete in sport today. I really believe that. That's Australia's warrior, a true Aussie battler, once part of the country's working class, who is known for his ability to fight well above his stature, he's respected globally for his modest yet determined nature. The Great's meteoric rise has been extraordinary and incredibly important to Australian MMA. This is the story of UFC featherweight champion Alexander the Great Volkanovski. Alexander the Great Volkanovski! Brought up in the Illawarra region on the outskirts of the south of Sydney, Wollongong was where Alex would be raised in a close-knit blue-collar community, known for its hard work and steelworks industries. A second-generation Australian with a mixed North Macedonian and Greek background, like many migrants, Alex would start his sporting career in soccer. He quickly would switch to Greco-Roman wrestling at the age of 12, rocking up to a local PCYC on a Friday night. This was Alexander's first introduction to martial arts, and it's safe to say he was a natural. During his two years in the sport, Volkanovski would become a two-time national champion, only losing twice in his wrestling career, with one of those losses coming to his older brother. Volkanovski said that these two years gave him a strong wrestling base, which would help him in his next endeavour. And that would be rugby league, and with Alexander living in the rugby league heartland of Wollongong, it would be no surprise. All of his mates at Lake Illawarra High, which Alex attended, were all avid footy players, and got Volkanovski to make the switch. At high school, Alex was a relatively decent kid, staying for the most part out of the way of trouble. He does recollect one instance where someone had been bad-mouthing his older brother in the schoolyard and would end up in a scuffle which would leave him on a few days suspension. In terms of rugby league, Volkanovski was a talented junior who made many rep sides throughout his teenage years. He would play amongst NRL talents like the Morris Twins and Trent Merrin, all coming up in the Illawarra area. Whilst working his way up the rugby league ranks, he applied his trade as a concreter following in his father's footsteps. Throughout his upbringing, his family was tight-knit and incredibly important to him, with the essence of family fueling his life ambitions. Alex would have stints with the Illawarra Steelers and country team, whilst also playing his footy for his beloved Warilla Lake South Gorillas in the Group 7 competition. During this period, Volkanovski said rugby league taught him how to be a brute and helped him become fearless. Now you might be thinking at his current size and stature, Volkanovski was cruising around at fullback or possibly in the halves. Volkanovski was the Warilla Gorillas' starting prop, and he was as wide as he was tall, coming in at 5 foot 6 and 97 kilograms. This is a photo of him back then. At 97 kilograms, this would qualify him as a light heavyweight in MMA terms. Pretty insane. Volkanovski's shining moment would be in his final year of rugby league. Volk in 2011 would win the Mick Cronin medal as the MVP of the South Coast Rugby League competition. During the grand final, Alexander would be a key piece in the Warilla Gorillas' first premiership in 14 years, scoring a try in the final and winning the Man of the Match award. Although some excellent achievements, at 22, Volkanovski knew he wasn't going to reach the bright lights of the NRL and decided upon a career switch. Bring it on, we bring it on. We must rewind back one year to when Alexander Volkanovsky would start his career switch, with that being from rugby league to the MMA. Prior to his final year as a rugby league player, Alexander would start with a friend at the freestyle fighting gym with the intentions of just staying fit over the off-season. Things transitioned quickly from a fitness hobby to an actual potential profession. Volkanovsky dominated from the get-go at the freestyle fighting gym, leaning on his wrestling background as well as a bit of natural ability. He was walking right through everyone in the gym, and after about three months in, Volkanovski would have his first organized sparring session at the gym's opening sparring day. His coach advised Alex to not spar as the guys sparring were much heavier than Volkanovski, but with one of the fighters missing, the great was just thrown into the ring and impressed. Submitting his opponent twice in the first few rounds and holding his own, Alex's coach at the time, Joe Lopez, asked Volkanovski if he wanted to fight, and Alex grabbed at the opportunity. He would make the decision to commit to MMA halfway through his final year in rugby league, and would have his first fight a month after the conclusion of the footy season. Volkanovski, standing at 5 foot 6 and 97 kilograms, would have to lose weight, coming down to 85 kilograms. Every fight was almost a David vs Goliath battle, 
as he would regularly fight opponents over 6 foot, although this really didn't bother him. To put it short, Volkanovski absolutely dominated his first four amateur bouts, as all four fights didn't even add up to one round. There was a 6 second knockout, two 30 second knockouts, and another that lasted 2 minutes. The bloke was a freak and looked set for greatness early on. With just under 4 minutes of amateur experience to his name, Volkanovski would turn pro, a decision he made as he wanted to make up for lost time already at 23 years of age, and start earning more financially for him and his partner. Volkanovski was having tough fights early and often, in a division he probably shouldn't have been in. Fighting now a weight class down at welterweight, Alexander would win his first 3 bouts and was undefeated to that point. His biggest test, however, would come against the top pound-for-pound -pound fighter in Australia at the time, which was Corey Nelson. Volkanovski would face his first significant hurdle in the fight game, losing convincingly to Nelson via TKO. It was a huge wake-up call for Volkanovski as he was controlled on the ground. He would take a step back from fighting for a short period and entirely focused on jiu-jitsu for months. He would move down a weight class to the lightweight division following the loss and would continue on his quest to compete in the UFC. Things were getting desperate financially during these years, as many had told Volkanovski to give the sport up, as he waited for his chance in the UFC. For example, Alex would see scholarships being offered at the world-renowned Tiger Muay Thai gym in Phuket, where the top 40 guys would try out hoping to get into the prestigious fighting establishment. Volkanovski, based on his record, was selected to try out, but didn't have the money to travel to Thailand. Alex and his partner Emma would make the decision to move back into home with Alex's mum and start a fundraiser to help Volkanovski move over to Thailand. The Illawarra community that he grew up with would help in numbers while sporting greats like Matt Cooper, Fabian Coulthard, and Bo Ryan auctioned off his memorabilia to get him overseas. A huge sacrifice by both his family and Illawarra to support someone who they genuinely believed in. Alex would end up winning the scholarship and felt the experience was a huge reality check going up against the most revered MMA fighters on the planet. Volkanovski at this point had given up the concreting and was now a full-time fighter. Volkanovski from there dominated everyone nationally whether it was by knockout, submission or by decision. Volkanovski was undoubtedly the best in Australia at the time, winning various national belts and the PXC featherweight belt, his first international championship. At the time, on a 7 fight win streak and with credentials that more than sufficed for a UFC debut, Volkanovski was becoming disheartened. Alexander would time his Australian Fighting Championship title defences to coincide with the UFC events in the region, just in case someone would withdraw. It was getting to the point where Volkanovski was thinking of returning back to Brick Lane. His wife Emma would have their first child Ariana, and things were getting tough for Volkanovski. The fight game really only pays well when you're at the top, and he was feeling the effects of that. He would win another fight extending his win streak to 8, and was granted an opportunity on the UFC Brisbane card. The UFC had specifically selected Volkanovski as the replacement for the upcoming card. Unfortunately, the UFC would contact a management company that no longer represented Alex, who ultimately finessed him out of the UFC contract. Volkanovski felt cheated, explaining it was probably the lowest point in his MMA career to that point. Now living with a kid still at home, with no money, Volkanovski was desperate. He would be thrown a lifeline though financially, as the company Southern Cross Industries would sponsor him for around 20 grand, a moment which turned things around for Volkanovski. One week later, he'd be contacted by the UFC and given his first UFC contract, a relieving moment for both him and his family. Throwing a shitload of left hands and left jabs. <laughs> you know, if you've got a busted hand, use a left or use a right when you have to. He would be scheduled to fight at the UFC Manila card, but again he would suffer another setback with the entirety of the card cancelled. He would fight two more times to stay competitive winning both bouts, whilst he waited for his UFC debut winning bouts. This meant over the four year period Volkanovski would go undefeated winning 9 fights, dominating everyone at both the lightweight and the featherweight classes. He was now more than qualified for his UFC debut, and would receive it at UFC Fight Night 101 held in Melbourne. The bout would be at lightweight, heavier than the majority of Volkanovski's recent fights, but he really didn't care, he just wanted to get his foot in the door. With 200 of his friends and family flying down to watch Volkanovski, he would put on a show, defeating Kazuke Kazuya via TKO in round 2. He dedicated the win to his wife, saying, If it wasn't for her, I wouldn't be where I am today. 
It was a huge relief winning his first fight, but like always, Alex stayed extremely committed with his overall goal to someday wear UFC gold. This relentless drive is what separated Volkanovski. Now with a family to feed and a second child, he had to perform and make his way to the top. He would stay in the featherweight division from his second fight onwards in the UFC, which by the way meant he lost 31 kilograms from his rugby league days, going from 97 to 66 kilograms. Pretty insane. He would dominate his next three fights against fellow unranked opponents, with one of those coming at home in Sydney, Australia, a truly special moment for Volkanovski. After defeating Shane Young in Sydney, he would make the switch to Auckland, New Zealand, teaming up with Israel Adesanya at City Kickboxing, a decision he made to be training consistently around full-time fighters. His first fight against a ranked opponent would be against Darren Elkins in Idaho, his American debut. In preparation for the fight, Volkanovski would suffer a debilitating rib injury. After five weeks away from his family in training camp, he would suffer the injury only three days prior to his fight with Elkins. Volkanovski's shot at announcing himself as a contender in the division seemed to vanish in an instant. The doctors advised him to not fight with the injury, as it was so painful he was unable to even cry. Volkanovski decided there was no other choice though but to fight considering the sheer sacrifice and potential opportunity this fight had. He said, This is why I do this. I do this for my family and I just thought what a waste of money and time if I don't give back to my family. With plenty of ice, anti-inflammatories, and adrenaline, Volkanovski slugged out a unanimous decision victory, pushing him to the number 10th contender in the division. His next bout would be against featherweight great Chad Mendes, coming in again as the ranked outsider. Volkanovski was arguably in his best shape of his career after rehabilitating serious back injuries that hampered him throughout his career so far. Volkanovski would wear out Mendez in the fight, and in what is probably his best finish in the UFC to date, hit Mendez with an assortment of hooks and uppercuts, winning the fight by TKO, earning him 50 grand for the Fight of the Night award. His next fight would be the one that would put him on the map globally, a bout against number one contender Jose Aldo in Brazil. Alexander Volkanovski in the featherweight division to this point was undefeated, 17-0, truly remarkable, but he yet to face one of the greats, and when it comes down to featherweight greats, there are few greater than former featherweight champion Jose Aldo. Volkanovski would step into the octagon and make Aldo look insignificant, absolutely controlling the fight in the stand-up and in the clinch. Silencing the Brazilian crowd, Volkanovski would win by unanimous decision and would book himself a shot at the title. The man holding that title was arguably the greatest featherweight of all time in Max Holloway, a true legend of the sport. There really was no tougher task for the great, but this was what he envisioned all those years ago from his mum's house in Illawarra. The several years of scraping by and the sacrifice he and his family had made would lead up to this moment. Volkanovski stayed composed like he had his entire career for the fight with very limited trash talk and a humbling aura. The championship stage was set, and he looked like he'd been ready for it his entire life, and boy did he show it at UFC 245. An absolutely dominating performance once again, where he would land vicious leg kicks from the off, Volkanovski's motor shone as he continued to outwork Holloway. He was throwing the heavier of the hands and outstriking Max in every round, winning the fight by unanimous decision and becoming the UFC featherweight champion. He would become Australia's second ever UFC champion, a truly remarkable feat for not only him but Australian MMA. Volkanovski would do it his way, and honestly the right way, with very little fanfare and still that hardworking nature that had carried him through his upbringing. The next step of course for any champion was to defend the belt, and a rematch between the two was subsequently booked. Only seven months later, the two would square off at UFC 251 in Abu Dhabi on Fight Island. Volkanovski was going to have to defeat the greatest featherweight for the second time in a row. This fight was ultimately much closer, with Volkanovski losing the first two rounds, followed by a tight third round which went either way. Alexander would finish off strong in the championship rounds with a decision an incredibly tight one. After going to the judges' scorecards, Volkanovski would retain his belt, winning by a split decision, his closest win so far in the UFC, toppling Holloway again. The decision was heavily debated by fans, but Alex's strong finish helped him get the decision. We fast forward now to what is believed to be Volkanovski's greatest performance in the octagon, in his latest title defense against Brian Ortega. 
Ortega's exceptionally good Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu background brought something different to the championship bout, and was something Alex had to be wary of. The fight was an instant classic, and gave us one of the greatest rounds ever in the octagon. Volkanovski had been winning the fight up until this point, where he'd find himself in a precarious position getting caught in a guillotine and triangle submission in round 3. In a period that defined Volkanovski as a champion, almost seconds away from losing oxygen, he would escape two extremely tight submission attempts, and without hesitation, return to some patented Volkanovski ground and pound. It was one of the great championship fights where Volkanovski would yet again retain his title and put his name into UFC folklore after a legendary display. Fast forwarding now to today, all of Australia will be behind Volkanovski as he defends his belt against Chen Sung Jung tomorrow at UFC 273 where he main events for the first time in his career. To end this video, I'll leave you with a quote from Alex himself that completely describes him as a person and as a champion. Some people fight for legacy, some people fight for money. Family and friends are my only motivation. Nothing compares to that. So that is all for this mini documentary of Alexander the Great Volkanovsky. His journey from the Illawarra region to the UFC has been truly remarkable and an inspiration to many. A lot of hours went into this video, so I'd be grateful if you could press the like button and subscribe if you want more of these mini documentaries. As always, thank you guys for watching.